Hey everyone, welcome back to the Push Forward Podcast. I am your host, Alex. And today we're diving into a top topic that has been uh, quite controversial, if you, if, if you believe this, uh, email. Many will say email marketing is dead. Well, typically you'll find that for pe- from people who have not yet done email marketing campaigns. If you speak to big brands, marketers that manage email campaigns at big brands, e-commerce platforms, IT companies, Google, Facebook. If you speak to um, affiliate marketers, it's a huge, uh, you know, there's an army of publishers out there. You will, you will understand very quickly that email marketing is not dead. In fact, email marketing can be a gold mine if you know how to tap into it. So if you're a solopreneur, a creator, an influencer who have, has not yet harnessed that, that channel, and, and you are looking to build, engage, and convert more of your followers, your audience, stick around because we're going to give you some insights here. All right. So why do people think email marketing is dead? Well, with the rise of SEO, social media, and pay-per-click ads, it's easy to think that email has lost its you know, uh, sheen. But here's the deal. The data shows that for every dollar that you spend on email marketing, the average ROI is $42. So imagine that. And it is much higher than that of the other channels. Now, it must be noted that when you are working in those other channels, you are working to generate more emails. We do that through ads. We do that through lead magnets. We do that through creating thoughtful content. And at the end of the content, we say, hey, subscribe to our newsletter. Or in many cases, if you have a lead magnet, which would be, as many of you know, uh, a useful piece of content could be a template, a case study, um, anything that is really useful to your target audience. You're saying you may download that by giving me your email. Once they get you get their email, they're in a sequence, a sequence of things that are useful to them based on what they have told you about themselves, right? Also, email is more personal. Unlike social media, where your message is just one among many in the sea of content, an email lands right into your inbox. And if done correctly, you can get their undivided attention. Not the same for other channels with direct messages and and, uh, form submissions, right? So there are ways that you can help optimize your email marketing campaign. So first and foremost, you need to choose a service provider. There's so many. ConvertKit, SendinBlue, Emma, HubSpot, MailChimp, Constant Contact. I personally like Zoho. But there's an array of features in any of these applications that are uh, easy to use, like uploading your subscribers, choosing the templates, A-B testing, automated workflows, uh, and most importantly, the insights and analytics, right? So you want to use these tools to send the right message to the right person at the right time. Again, not, not, not to put SEO, social media, or any other channel in the backseat. It's to say, let's work together. You know, we've talked about own content versus shared content. Well, email happens to be uh, a, a, a owned media channel versus a shared or paid media channel. Okay. And what that means is that you own the experience, you own the messaging between you and the customer as much as you do with your website. So your website and your so and your email marketing, website and email marketing are the two channels where you have direct communication with your customer that is not disrupted or doesn't add friction because of an algorithm. It's direct from you to your customer, to your follower, to your subscriber. Whereas social media, SEO, um, paid ads, those have other competing forces. Uh, for, for one thing, it's your competitors are there uh, with the algorithm and paid ads and even social media. But there's a lot of friction. It's not a direct to consumer or direct to the business. Email does that for you. Also, email, you can A-B test easily. For example, you can send two versions of one email, just changing the subject line. For example, a subject line like, unlock 20% of your next purchase, right? So unlock 20% of the next purchase. When you use numbers in a subject line, it is a great thing to do. Uh, And if I use that versus special discount just for you, the keyword there being special and discount, of course, just for you. And I may even 
use um, a tag in the subject line to actually call you out by name. This way it's more customized. So you're going to find different ways that you can convert more using email. Now with email, uh, one big thing that you want to look at is the subject line. We like a tool called Omnisend, O-M-N-I-S-E-N-D.com, Omnisend. Look for their subject line tester uh, app. It's a very simple tool, but it's important. Why? Because every study shows at bare minimum, 35% of subscribers who get emails open that email based solely on the subject line. So you you want to be able to analyze those subject lines. So you put the subject line, you do the pre-header, you put it into Omnisend, and it's going to rate it for the wording, the scannability, the you did you use numbers? Did you how many words did you use? For example, the the seven is a good number to target for characters uh, about forty, but it's going to give you a score, and then based on that score, you can make some changes. It's also going to give you a list of over 50 words that you can use. Words like what I talked about, special discount, a number, words like available, go, get, register, remember, um, upgrade, update. Uh, there's a lot of great keywords that you could and should be using when doing your email marketing. So if you're not doing email marketing, you're leaving money on the table because guess what? You may not personally like email, Perhaps you spend most of your time on one channel on social media, or you already have a monetization plan in place. But at the end of the day, when your user decides that they're going to leave that platform for good, which by the way, social media, paid ads, SEO, it's all rented space, rented space, meaning we have the privilege for free other than paid ads, but for free to be there. But if the algorithm changes or if the user leaves, you no longer have a relationship. So the only way to build that relationship long-term with your customers, with your followers and your subscribers is to bring them to your website and then from your website, capture their email, manage it in a database, get it into your email service provider, and then delight them with messages. But be consistent, right? You, 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 many subscribers of, of email will will have have said in 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 many surveys and i have so many surveys that we're going to add here to to um the push forward podcast so that you have it at a moment's notice but so many of them have indicated that they get as many as 10 to 15 emails per day from the different influencers and followers and bloggers now bloggers i should say if you're a blogger and you're listening to this podcast you are probably no stranger to doing email right. Bloggers from the beginning, I remember going back to early 2000s, bloggers understood right away that I got to get people to my blog. So I got to rank organically. So I got to do the whole backlinking thing and build my links with the, you know, uh, guest posts. Great. But once I get users here, I got to get their email and then I got to email them on a regular basis. And if you look at affiliate marketing, it's all based on a lot of email marketing publishers out there who can stay in front of people who are used to getting email, right? I may not like email. You may not like email, but there are billions of people who love getting email, right? And they're not going to give you their phone number. So it's going to be hard for you to do SMS. And if you're, you know, a dentist, a service provider, a salon, something like that, people will give you their SMS number, right? Your healthcare provider, doctor. But if you are an influencer, a solopreneur, a financial advisor, a lawyer, a, a, a course creator, any, any, uh, anyone in that creator universe, it's really hard for you to get those phone numbers, but it's not that hard for you to get those emails. And then you want to use a service like X verify X verify. You can scrub the emails to make sure that they are correct. It costs about a penny to do that. And then as you start to manage your database, you will push out the emails from people. Well, number one, the emails that are no good. Number two, the people who are not opening your emails, they should go in a different segment. And segmenting them is super, super important, right? Because if you upload them and you just do a one size fits all, it's not going to work. You need to segment, you know, customers from followers, followers to subscribers, people who bought your product, people who are um, um, just leads coming in, they want partnerships. So segment those, those, audiences and send them customized messages. They all deserve 
to have customized messages. And when you do that, you will notice that the open rate will go up, the click rate will go up, you will generate a lot more from your email marketing efforts. So the value of your time cannot be overstated, and I understand that. And that's why I think email is also good. You can create those automated workflows that can send out that welcome email, the onboarding email. Um, well, for those of you that have e-commerce, the abandoned cart reminders, which if you have Shopify, you can do automatically with one click. Make sure the people who abandon the shopping cart, they get an email within a few hours or the next day. And then make sure you have a sequence that is automated so that you can add value and help build that relationship with your audience. I have case studies where uh, you know, a, a small contractor, local contractor nurtured a lead with anywhere between 10 to 15 emails per year. And after four years of doing that, they were able to close that into a deal that was worth over a hundred thousand dollars for a project, a major remodeling project. So if you nurture these, these leads, if you nurture these relationships, they will eventually pan out. And again, remember it's that own channel the direct relationship and communication between you and the customer through your email. Email is worth gold, right? So make sure you map out that funnel, map out that customer journey, and then offer something of value, engage with the personalized content and convert them into paying customers. So if you're a creator and you're not doing email, you are absolutely missing out. The key strategies and tools to leverage email marketing can really take you to the next level. So thanks so much for tuning in to the Push Forward podcast. I hope this has been, that you found this episode valuable. And believe me, from someone who's been 15 years in the digital marketing space, I've done thousands of email marketing campaigns. It continues to drive traffic and drive uh, sales for customers. So if you like this episode, share it with someone that could benefit from it. And don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode from us. Until next time, keep pushing forward.